Congratulations. Hello, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. We're starting a bit late, which is normal for Hack Days. Uh, but I think uh, the first people are, or have all arrived. So, sorry, welcome to uh, Eindhoven Fontys University Science Hack Day 2013. This is the second uh, Science Hack Day we are doing in Eindhoven. And uh, we have uh, kind of the same amount of people as last year. So around 50 people will uh, join the crowd. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, a very exciting 32 hours, which is a long run. But then uh, I think not many people will uh, stay uh, awake all night. We'll see about that. Um, it's a very uh, mixed international uh, group and uh, we are will start with um, some introduction uh, from me and from Carmen Karasik who will do the first lighting talk and after that um, we'll have a, a matching of ideas and teams that are uh, present today and that maybe will develop further. Um, you all got the program, which is uh, quite uh, easy to understand. We have lunch, we have dinner, we have an uh, evening to work further, and then in the morning we have uh, another lighting talk. <laughs> and, and after lunch, we're going to start uh, making presentations for the pitch for the jury, which will start at 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon. And then uh, the jury will um, see who is going to win the big prizes that you can see around the teams that are on the website. Um, it's all about the uh, future city, about uh, new technology applications uh, that we can think of. Uh, different themes have been announced like energy, mobility and health. And of course, uh, this is all related to uh, new media technologies, open data, uh, sensor networks that are available. So I think it will be very um, <coughs> exciting to see how the ideas will develop into uh, concepts and the concepts will develop into prototypes and see if you can make it work tomorrow afternoon, because that's the challenge. Um, uh, I think that uh, some people may have arrived already with an idea or maybe with a team. So we'll see about that after the talk of Carmen. And um, we'll make um, <coughs> some different tables with numbers. The numbers will be on the screen. Yeah, you can see what is the idea and who will join the team. And then we can proceed from there. So, I'm going to see if uh, Carmen is ready. Uh, she will give a, a presentation about uh, related topics and interesting ideas. And, um, well, I hope you will enjoy the two days and uh, work hard and have a lot of inspiration. And uh, good luck with your development. Thank you. That's easier. What did you ask? Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, we start. <coughs> Hello. So, well, Hello. <laughs> OK. Uh, I hope you guys are awake, right? Oh, kind of? More coffee? <laughs> I need more coffee. Anyway, hello. Um, as he said, my name's Carmen, and I want to give you some sort of talk to sort of get you in the mood for the day. I hope you're already in the mood for the day, but maybe I can up your energy a little. So the theme of uh, this Science Hack Day is the city of the future, and we should be focused on energy, health, and mobility. But what is it really about? 
It's really about amazing creative power of curious people like you who are working on things that they're passionate about and you have given yourself this free will stress of creating something within 30 hours. So let's take a look at some examples of other hackathons and other projects that have been developed under the same similar stress. Last year, a hackathon team developed an app to help people understand their city's, city's budget. This was in Oakland, California, and the project was called Open Budget. It's a web app for visualizing and interacting um, city, whoops, uh, whoops, see, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about that. I have to do a little, yeah, it's, I have to see more, okay. <laughs> Um, it's an app called uh, Open Budget, and it's a web app for visualizing and interacting with city budgets. The team won the 2012 op um, Code for Oakland Hackathon. And riding on the success of their win, they thought it would be great for the project to actually be used by people. So what they did was they did some research and found out that there was um, an application called Open Spending, that was already looking at the money and how money is spent around the world. The aim of open spending is to help track every public government and corporate financial transaction across the world. And then to present that information in a useful and engaging form so that anyone, even school children, um, all the way to data geeks, are able to use that information. The open budget team contracted or contacted the open spending community and they helped them customize open budget so that people would be able to comment on and share city budgets. The tool is indeed used by the public today. And this started with just an idea. So now this is something that the mayor of Oakland can use for uh, sharing how the budget is spent with the people of o Oakland. But this really was just an idea, just as the ideas that you might have today. This was an idea from a university professor and a community organizer. They pitched the idea that they needed an app to help people understand the city's budget. They wanted to see where the money comes from and how the money is spent and they wanted to enable people to share and discuss their own ideas of how the budget should go. Well, I'm sure you have ideas too, so what are your ideas? And how can we hack society? How can we hack the city? How about hacking the city of today, now? And how can we predict when a uh, project is going to go over budget? There are lots of questions like this, unlimited questions and ideas for hacking the future of the city. For example, who are our biggest transportation providers? What do we know about public transportation? And what if we understood more about transportation in general? Also, what about development plans? Are there companies with certain sectors, are there companies within certain sectors that seem to get a large amount of the contracts? How would the city be different if smaller organizations and smaller um, companies were able to get some of these new contracts? Where does our food come from? How much is shipped here? How much is local? What can we do to push for more locally produced food? What if we had an app that told us where fresh food comes from? And it told us how the food was produced, and it told us how it got to the market. What if we knew where the markets with the fresh foods were, um, were located within our, um, within our city? And we also knew when the food is freshest. And we also knew um, what's available at the given markets, and the price, and so on. There's an app for that, it's called Fresh Fix. It does exactly that. And it's an app for finding fresh foods from local green farmers and bringing those foods to urban consumers. This helps reduce CO2 by avoiding excessive uh, shipping of the foods. So speaking of health um, in terms of food, let's consider some recent health acts, health hacks. <laughs> 
One of them, one such health hack is called Right Angle, and I'd like to show you a video of a uh, hackathon in Stockholm. So, um, I have to get out of this. And come over here. examination within physiotherapy. And uh, we've been looking into improving a test called uh, range of motion. And basically it's uh, testing how much you can bend or twist a joint. And this is how this, the test is done today. You're using a mechanical device, uh, that one, to see how much you can bend your joints. And that is a quite uh, tedious examination, and it's obviously very inaccurate. At, it's based on uh, estimations, and it also requires professional assistance. Uh, so what we've done is that we've developed a solution that's, uh, that uses a novel way to measure the, the range of motion. So we're using this um, wireless device that can be attached to uh, any part of the patient close to the joint that's going to be measured. And uh, then this will automatically measure the range of motion. And it's uh, much easier to use than the, than the existing devices. It's, uh, it can be used by the patient, so uh, it can be used at home to verify that he's doing this or her test in the right way. And it's very low cost, so it should be accessible for all. And during this weekend, we have uh, done a first prototype of this uh, device, and we're going to show it now in a short demo. Okay, and uh, so uh, here, this is the setup screen, and so here we select which joint to measure. So this is the left elbow, and uh, Jarke here is our uh, patient, and uh, as she uh, moves his arm, you can see that this angle increases. I apologize that you can't really the see full, the demo. Uh, full contraction, uh, the operator presses uh, stop, and uh, you get results here. And then you can uh, do this test uh, several times, and you can also see results of previous tests to see if the, the motion has been improved or, or uh, yeah, how it's developed. So uh, yes, that's that's our idea, and our product. Yeah. Uh, great presentation, really clear what you were doing and uh, how it would work. Uh, so what would the price point be for, for the gadget? The price. The price. Oh, the price. Uh, we calculate that the components will cost less than $10, so yeah, in that range. And I'd like to take a look at one more health hack. This one from MIT. It's called, um, it's the MIT Health and Wellness uh, Innovation Hackathon. And this is a tool called Aon, and it's a tool for monitoring Parkinson's disease patients. Sorry about this. <laughs> I kind of have the wrong link loaded. <laughs> you know what? It's okay. Let's we'll just skip it. Yeah, yeah. Just skip it. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. We'll just keep going.
All right, so in any case, let's move on to energy hacks. <clears throat> what if you knew more about the energy that you used in your home? Or how about the energy that is consumed in, uh, in industries, local industries? And what if you understood when that energy is consumed in terms of the peak hours? Um, what kinds of things could be done with this information? A real-time billing optimizer would help because that way electricity contracts could be based on um, peak hours of consumption rather than uh, just using a, um, a fixed fee. There's an app for that too. This one is called Smart Saver. And what Smart Saver does is it recognizes the fact that most consumers are indeed paying uh, fixed prices for electricity and spot pricing would um, be available in some areas. And if it is available in those areas, then people would be able to reduce the high cost of um, electricity. And also the load shifting would help the, um, the electricity uh, companies, the manufacturers as well. It also uh, reduces the CO2 consumption because power is uh, generally um, using up fossil fuels and we would be using less, foss less fossil fuels. So the potential for this sort of um, applied open data is, is endless. So I, I have um, another video for you. This one is Open Counter. It's made by Code for America. It's a web app. And this particular one allows future entrepreneurs to be able to get the forms that they need online. So it also prevents unnecessary transportation. Are we? Oops. <laughs> there. Across the country, community groups collect information about their neighborhoods. Maybe they'd like to know how many vacant houses are on their block or where to patrol for a neighborhood watch. But the way these groups collect information can be lengthy and confusing. It also usually requires outside help from experts. How can we make this easier? Introducing local data, an easy way to democratize the way groups collect and understand information about their communities. Let's take a look at how it works. Create custom surveys for your group and collect information with a smartphone or pen and paper. I should let you do this. <laughs> From there, you can quickly upload the data to the same place, organize, and export it the way you need it. Groups need data on their neighborhoods for many reasons. From organizing around an environmental or political campaign to fundraising, data is a stepping stone to inform citizen action. Local data is an open source project made by Code for America. Check out more at golocaldata.com. I actually somehow skipped ahead and showed you local data, but I, I would like to show you another hack from the same exact organization, Code for America. This one is Open Counter. The process of obtaining a business permit can seem complicated and confusing. And due to budget constraints, the planning department staff is only available to the public from 7 a.m. to noon, Monday through Thursday. This year, Code for America is working with the city of Santa Cruz to build Open Counter. Open Counter is an online guide that uses everyday language to explain the process of obtaining a business permit. It also educates citizens about the reasons why these regulations exist. Let's take a look at Open Counter. It takes you step by step through the process, explaining each step simply with examples. Some features include tools that let you check on zoning and prior use, fee calculators, a way for people who work from home to apply online for all necessary permits. Santa Cruz's planning department is awesome. One of the most important things Open Counter allows you to do is start a dialogue with them and request information that is specific to you. Small businesses are the heart of cities, so it is important to make this necessary process as easy and transparent as possible. Open Counter is doing this, and it's all open source. Check out the repo. 
If you have any questions or just want to chat, feel free to send us an email. Thanks. Okay, a few minutes ago you also already saw the local data, so I obviously don't need to play that again. But both of these are examples of um, uh, applications that are developed by people like you who get together and decide that they can use open data to uh, create something that's actually useful for their urban, er, urban area. But speaking of urban areas, <clears throat> what about our own local data? What if we knew more about accidents in general? What if we knew more about car accidents? What if we knew more about bicycle accidents, pedestrian accidents? What would we be able to change with having this information? Or how about just for fun, using information, using our own information? Google is, is, uh, is good at giving you the shortest route between point A and point, point B, but Funky Root does something different. It makes this more fun by finding interesting things that the people from um, the area uh, contribute, sort of like crowdsourcing, and then it generates a group, uh, I'm sorry, it generates a route based on that group's information about what would be a really funky trip. So hackathons are relevant to more than just people who are interested in hacking, more than just people who are visionaries for the future. It's also an interesting proposition to have a hackathon if you are a manufacturer. For example, a car manufacturer. Recently, 80 technology developers and uh, programmers participated in a sustainability hackathon. And the idea was to tackle electromobility for future cars. Because as more drivers are turning to electronic cars instead of uh, traditional gas-powered cars, Companies need to make the effort to invest more in um, new ways to mass produce zero emission vehicles. So, what are you going to contribute to the future today? Let's roll up our sleeves and show us. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Carmen. <laughs> So this will uh, make us uh, awake a little bit about ideas and uh, projects that are possible. Um, we are now going to um, see what teams and what ideas uh, are already uh, in the room and how we can uh, mix people into teams and find uh, things to work on. For that we have uh, prepared uh, some uh, numbers that we can put on tables, so uh, what you will see on screen is uh, a list of ideas uh, coupled to a number and we will put the number at the table where the idea is uh, announced and then uh, you can mix and uh, see if you can uh, join the team or uh, see what other teams are doing and join another team. So in the first stage we will have a kind of a mixing uh, matching and gathering of ideas. So um, I want to see if uh, who is already here with a, a team and an idea, who, who thought of things uh, at home. I see some hands there. So uh, Eugène will uh, start to uh, <laughs> do some things uh, on the screen. So I, I will call this table one with the most hands in the air. Uh, can you shortly uh, pitch the idea? Uh, just one minute. Try to keep it short. So um, our idea is um, it's called Fresta, and it's uh, a home growing um, system for in the kitchen where you can uh, can grow your own vegetables. Uh, what does it do? What does it do? Um, we want to achieve that we have a working prototype that, um, that is the ideal uh, climate for a certain vegetable uh, in, the, in the sense of um, giving water, giving um, uh, light, giving um, well, well, everything that, that the vegetable needs. Yeah, and it, indeed it's fully, fully automated and you can ideally you can follow uh, how your uh, vegetables are doing. Thank you. And, and you need uh, some electronics and some sensor 
people and some software engineers and it's already on the table. Yeah. So, okay, your team won. And if people want to join or you want to mix, then just talk to each other and we'll see about that. I saw some hands here too. Um, can you introduce the idea? We're not a team, but uh, we both have IDs. Uh, my name is Martijn. Uh, the idea I have is uh, really simple. Uh, it's basically a group chat on location. So you sign into this building and you have a group chat with all the people who are around there. You get in direct communication with each other. Uh, you can share videos with each other, you can share pictures with each other, and it's just uh, a mobile way for uh, communicating in big groups. Uh, it takes the boundary away of uh, going to people and um, uh, talking to them. You, you use your app so it's, it's, it's less frightening in some way. And um, it's a really easy way to get in direct uh, communication with organizers, events, shops, or whatever. It's, so it's basically just a, a group chat app on location. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, what is your uh, uh, background? What do you need in, in, the, in the team to develop this? I have no technical skills whatsoever, so I need everyone. <laughs> Uh, well, I, we just met with Martin and we discussed the idea and we probably will need, because uh, we need to develop the app for an Android phone, so we probably will need a bunch of uh, uh, software engineers that can help us. Myself, I, need, I can program in, uh, in Java, so I can help him with that. And I also have some idea on my own that I would like to uh, present. Yeah. Well, it's just a brainstorm for now, but we'll see how that goes. So, we gave you number three. okay. No. Well, my idea is basically to create um, a three D visualization stuff of mathematical functions. As a student, everybody will uh, love to, as we use a lot of uh, mathematical uh, tools to create uh, our functions, and uh, visualization takes a really a crucial part of that. So uh, I, what I would like to develop is to create uh, a mini blocks, and that can be uh, manipulated in, in space. And uh, uh, so as we manipulate those uh, uh, blocks, so to speak, uh, we can create uh, uh, an image of a function that can be explored in many ways. And of course, the behavior will be uh, dynamic, so you can, uh, as you manipulate the function, it will be connected and the blocks will uh, respond correspondingly. And uh, that's basically the idea. And it will help many people. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's uh, another idea that people can uh, uh, join and talk about and brainstorm further. So I want to go to the other side of the room for uh, ideas. Um, I saw some hands on this side. You can uh, pitch your idea in one minute. I will. It's a, maybe it's a bit in the, in the same area as a former speaker was. Um, I like to show uh, open data in 3D world, in virtuality world. I brought my Oculus Rift with me, where you can uh, look in a 3D world. So I'd like to, to show some some open data in it, so you can walk around and show statistics in a 3D world. Okay, thank you. So that's a good idea. If people have uh, ideas that uh, match and sit in the same direction, uh, you can talk and see if you are going to uh, join forces. I see a hand here. Can you uh, shortly introduce uh, the idea? Yeah, my name is Dick Janssen. Um, I had an idea about uh, uh, me uh, measuring uh, utility meters, uh, gathering the data. Um, uh, that can be electricity, uh, water, or gas meters. Uh, push that data to a uh, local web server uh, and um, advise people on the best utility provider based on the measured data. It's called Harmoneco. 
It has a name. It also has a website already. It's, um, uh, it's, I thought about this a couple of years ago, but due to circumstances, I couldn't work on it, and now it's an ideal time to pick it up again. Harmoneco. Harmoneco.nl or dot com. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. That's number five. Um, some people here. You want to? We have a team, but you have a team, but no idea. So. Yeah, you can you can uh, check the list and see if you find something in the list, or you get brainstorm. You can brainstorm and and announce it later because we'll make some some other rounds how ideas are developing. So someone wants to do a pitch for another idea. Hello, I'm Mars. I have a right now a short idea. It's uh, making a candles 3D printer. And uh, the main thing is uh, customer from uh, up uh, choose the candle, make from pixels what the candle can look, and uh, order that. And we can print that candle. I'm a technical guy. I have a few ideas about uh, how to implement uh, mechanically print the candle, but I need uh, software uh, and uh, a 3D printer <laughs> and candles. Okay. And your name was? Uh, Maris. Maris, okay. Um, the table here, are you a team? Do uh, you have an idea? Are you going to brainstorm? Okay, so our idea is called Smart Sporting. And basically what we'll do is each person when they go to the gym, they will have a unique ID or an RFID card or something. And then when they use the machine, they just swipe their card, and then we'll collect data from them when they use the machine. And also we'll use the energy that they put into the machine for saving electricity and other uses. Yeah. OK, so um, it's clear the title. OK, so we are going to the next ideas. We got a whole list of uh, of ideas and probably too much to um, develop all of them. So we have to see uh, how we can mix and uh, match these uh, ideas and teams. Um, but you can do that yourself by dropping by the tables with the numbers and look at the list on the screen. So we have another idea. That's number nine for you. My name is Marina. And I have an uh, idea about a smart doorbell. If we uh, look on doorbell of today, that's just a button, that's all. And, uh, and it's a noise which uh, reminds you that somebody is on the door. With all technology we have today, we can make uh, our doorbell like uh, equipped with a video camera, microphone and speaker, and to put it on the internet and uh, to have an application on your smartphone. So you can uh, watch your uh, front door anytime, uh, from your bed, from your bus, from your uh, job. So you can uh, uh, communicate with somebody who, uh, uh, um, who make a signal. And uh, most important, you can also download a different kind of melody and you will have like a ringtone on your smartphone. You can also have this ringtone on your uh, front door. Yeah. So just make your uh, front door more intelligent and um, more um, easy uh, to communicate. Okay, thank you. That's an interesting idea. Um, um, do I have other names? You are uh, raising your hand. Do you want to? Pitch an idea. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Alan. Uh, I have a res uh, Raspberry Pi with me, uh, which is a very cheap, low-cost uh, computer, uh, kind of, uh, in a way. And uh, my idea is to use this kind of uh, cheap, uh, low-cost computer to uh, impl uh, implement some uh, software, which uh, maybe you can uh, detect the the uh, the water or the, the the air or the food. Uh, or even like uh, the human body uh, health, like a, a blood, blood, blood pressure, and all kind of things. So it's, yeah, it's not really clear what you uh, can do with that, but there's a lot of potential. So I would like to have uh, people input from that. 
And uh, yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you want to, to connect with other people to brainstorm about these possibilities? Yeah. Did you get the idea, Eugene? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> Can you say it in, in one uh, sentence what the essence is? You, you want to have body sensors? Uh, what can we do with the res uh, Raspberry Pi to, to help uh, better work? Mm. Okay. okay um, we have not seen everybody. Do you, you don't have an idea yet, so you're going to brainstorm or join a team. You uh, want to pitch something you want to join later? Brought lots of stuff, but no ideas. <laughs> okay, well. That's a perfect match because there's also a lot of people with ideas and other stuff, so <laughs> that will be a good match. Do um, you want to brainstorm and join later? So you're going to, to see where you will join or what you are going to do? Good. Well, it seems that... Uh, is there in the back uh, something to pitch? No? We get all the pitches. Oh, someone took your number? Because you didn't... Uh, um, well, you get number 10. No. But it's a, but it's a, yeah, so, this is the brainstorm table. It's number 10. Um, so now, if we can see the list, maybe you can uh, show it a bit in a, in a way that you can have an overview. No. No. So did everybody um, remember what the ideas were globally? Then you can see uh, at what table. And I, I think you have to stand up and walk around and uh, talk to people, see if you can match your competencies. Like uh, you need some uh, engineering, you need some uh, software, you need some design concept people and mix that together into an interesting product. Um, we're going to make a list on the screen so you can check later what the idea was. But I think it's also good to walk around and see if you can uh, uh, match your ideas with other people. Like uh, you have ideas and there's people with stuff. so. Just go and talk and uh, see um, if you can uh, match the ideas into one other idea, maybe. Because um, the, in the discussion about ideas, new ideas will come up and you can combine them into a better idea. Um, and we're not going to do all that uh, live. So um, it's best to start talking about, well, what's your idea, what's my idea, and how can we work together, and how can we make a, it a better idea. Like uh, the doorbell. Well, did you hear other ideas that can match with your idea? So you have to, to go over the list and to talk to people, well, maybe uh, match with your idea. Because you're not going to do it alone. Yeah. That kind of relates to it, well. <laughs> You had uh, the, uh, the pie. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe these people or that people have uh, same ideas. Yeah, these people have the same ideas. Yeah, people have the same ideas. You can exchange, so you have to walk and walk and talk. And also, if your idea is on screen, you want to change it or uh, make it more clear, it's okay. If you want the mic, because you've got an suddenly a better idea. Grab the mic. 